Hello, this is Geeks at the Movies, Shane Goodrich, Jacob Details. This is a new segment we're going to try out today. I am a comic book novice. Jacob here is here, the expert. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Jake introduce me to the best works of comic books. And what is the first thing we are introducing me to? This is Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. It's a really well-written book. I feel like it's a good starting point, actually, for people who haven't read anything of Batman related before. And it's weird, it's kind of weird to say that because it's not a book that is canon. And what I mean by canon is it's something that's not actually a part of the DC universe. It's its own, it's, 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 it's in its own universe. It's an older Batman coming out of retirement. Gang, uh, gangs have kind of taken over um, Gotham City. So he decides to come out of retirement. Uh, uh, try to push these gangs at, back. It's a really interesting story because you know, he's older, he's, he's not at the peak of human perfection anymore. So, uh, so he decides to uh, go, go out, uh, take, take these gangs out, but, he, but there's, this really, there's this really cool aspect of it because he's, he's not as strong anymore, so he's faced to think about things. His, his, his mind is, is something that hasn't changed. He's still like this really smart, really, uh, really clever Batman that that we know. But this introduced us to the the really dark, really brutal mm. and violent Batman that we that we've seen in the movies and and now in future comics. So, uh, so I, re- I recommend this book to someone who hasn't uh, gone gotten into Batman before. But just keep in mind that this was the first time that we saw a really dark and brutal Batman. And you feel that this influence the tone of the DC Cinematic Universe? I do. They're drawing from this? Yeah, and especially in uh, Batman vs. Superman, they're actually taking a lot of influence from this because um, this is a very minor spoiler, but Superman's in it. And um, the, uh, the armor that he's wearing in the trailer, that, that's drawn directly from this. And uh, it, it has, has that dark tone that, uh, that they're going for in the DC Cinematic Universe. With the, with the muted, I noticed with the muted colors as well. This yeah. comic book style is more muted, similar to uh, Man of Steel. Yeah, that, that, that's definitely true. Um, it's something that they do a lot in Frank Miller's uh, stories because a lot of a lot of his work has been turned into movies, like uh, Sin City, that was completely uh, muted color, and then they brought out the, like the important aspects, and that, that's what he does with his uh, with his style. Okay, well, why don't you, you elaborate, Jake, on why you like comic books? It, well, it's because it's storytelling, but they have the, they bring out the important parts with with the pictures. They like that they expand on what they want to be brought out because th- th- there's picture uh, there's uh, comic books with. That don't even have any dialogue in them. There, there, there's some, mm-hmm. and there's some issues that I've read of, of certain series that don't don't have any dialogue. They explain the whole story through through the illustrations, and that that's what I really like about uh, comic books. That they have really good illustrations mixed with a really good in- interesting story, and that makes like the perfect. Now let me they pause you right there, Jake. Really good interesting story. I think there's some people that might say comic book storylines or writing are oftentimes subpar with the constant redos, fake deaths, uh, logical inconsistencies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are the things that kept me away from comics when I hear, oh, this character has died for the fifth time. Oh, now there's a fourth alternate universe, and it's m- mixing with this alternate universe, and it's difficult to see how, how you can even get into this impenetrable mess. Well, that's why I think that The Dark Knight Returns is a good starting point because it doesn't it does, it's not affected by any of those Ooh, other stories. It's more bester than it's it's, it's its own standalone thing. There are sequels or a, a sequel that I heard is not so good, but it's it, it's 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 its own universe. It's it's self-contained. So I think this is a good starting point. And yes, with comic books, yes, my favorite comic book character. Yes. So and with comic books, there is like the whole the whole trope where they uh, someone dies, and now it takes away from. Like the impact because you know that they're not dead. They, Wolverine not, died. Yeah. No. That that's what no, that's didn't. what uh the death of Superman did. Uh, that 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 was the first part. Uh, that, that that was where that really started, and then they they brought him back like a month later. <laughs> Obviously, 
uh, after Batman, he's the next biggest guy. They're not going to kill him. It wouldn't make any sense. Like, even if they have just kept him dead for like five years, that would have done something that 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 would have like actually added to the to the uh, impact of it. But and all, and, and the, the character stories are are being rewritten with these alternate yeah. universes. So it's like, well, I want to get this character story. So here's the starting point, and here's the current point in that story. But if, if you look at along the way, there has been these reshuffles. These World yeah. events, yeah. And as an outsider, I read a few. I read comic books a little bit when I was when I was younger, when I was in high, when I was in middle school. But now I look. Now I, it's so hard to get into. I mean, do you think that this is a problem for comic books in general, or do you think is this perception true that I'm having of comic books being this complete mess, or am I overstating it? I think that, like, yes, they, they've over the years they've done a lot of reboots, a lot of they, they've like. Rebooted like the characters in Pacific to make um, to make them more like their age fit with the year that it is and everything like that. So he, that 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 is a, I, but I don't think that's a problem. I think that um, with DC uh, they done I think it was in 2011 they did, they did the the New 52 where they took like the characters themselves certain uh, uh, like life changing events that they've had and just take them and put and like re restarted it. They, um, with Batman, they did a uh, the new Fifty Two is an excellent excellent read. I think uh, we'll do that after this maybe. Um, so like as long as they, as long as you know like the who the character is and like basic parts about them, you can you can get. You were telling me that is what you like about the story yeah. because this as long you have a character you have this you have Captain America you have Batman you have whoever. Okay, I know who this character is. He has certain characteristics. He has certain aspects of his personality that I'm interested in. And now you can put him in different stories and different situations. Yeah. As long as they stay true to the character, it's fine. But this is something, again, I'm not the expert here, but it seems like when you have so many different writers and so many different issues of prints that you can't stay true to the character. Yeah. You, you have one version of Superman that is an immortal, super, the most powerful guy in the universe, and another version that's not. You have one version of Batman that's the brutal... Uh, brutal guy, another version that's not. You, th- there's not going to be this, the same character in different un- in different situations. It's going to be a different character in different situations. Because I, I could see, like, if it was like um, the same character in different situations, that that works for me. Uh, that's just a matter of sorting through the chaff uh, from the good stuff. Well, for the whole different writers thing, like that's what I actually like about comic books is that you get a different, you get someone else's perspective. It's it's all it's like. It's kind of like fan fiction. You just get a new writer in to do something different, like to tell what they want to tell. Like e- that's why they have like different story arcs. So they, they bring in different writers. They recycle. Uh, they recycle through writers and uh, and artists. So you get like a new take on it, like every like every few months. But so that's fine. To see, that's fine to me because you can do that with say the MCU, where they had different writers writing the same characters, but. Have you ever been reading, say, a comic book series and a new writer came in and it's like, whoa, this, this is now a different character? No. Uh, well, I'm sure it's happened before, but what kind of messes, what messes me up is when they change the, uh, the artists because that kind of actually, that changes the, actually, the, actually changes the tone for me more than the writer at, at, at some points because I was reading this X-Men series. It was, like, kind of realistically drawn, like, uh, kind of like what like the basic standard uh, comic book illustrator is now like does now, and then for two issues they change the uh, the, the art style to this more like cartoonish kind of thing. And I was like, whoa, this is really weird. But they they kept the writers, but the the art style is completely different now. And I and like I kind of have like a hard time taking certain parts seriously. Now you were in a, a different world. Yeah, and then. Then two issues. Then after those two issues, they went back to the older art style, and I was like, "Okay, this is more. This is back to normal now." But it's still not that big of a deal, as long as they, like, with even like what, what the what the readers need to do is what the writers need to do. They need to know who the character is, and then just go from there. That, that's all they really need to know. Well, and all you guys need to know is that I'm going to be reading The Dark Knight for my homework. Uh, we don't have a name for this segment yet, so if you're on our YouTube channel and you got an idea for a name, comment and like and subscribe. This has been Geeks at the Movies. Later. <laughs>